Mwah. See this? Hi, Leather Rock here. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time, I'd li like to invite you to subscribe. Hit that bell notification and make sure it looks like it's it's vibrating. If you do, you won't miss anything I post. And I got some real groovy things coming up. You just saw Tabby Boy. And this one right here is Cassie. Isn't she pretty girl? Yes, I woke you up. I'm terrible, aren't I? And today we're going to do a makeup tutorial. Um, I couldn't find all the colors I wanted in one palette. I'm finding that that's becoming too limiting and... I am going to do something a little bit special. Well, I think all my videos are kind of special, but I have some special tips and tricks that I have come up with through the years. I don't claim to be an expert, but I do have some cosmetology training, and I do have quite some experience because I love makeup, and I've certainly been wearing enough of it from, you know, since high school and stuff. So, and I have been told that I wear way too much of it, and I'm sure I buy too much of it, and I really why wear this stuff and maybe I can show you a thing or two. So let's get started. Um, first of all, uh, I am also still using this Too Faced Then and Now palette. And this, you know, I know you've seen this before, but one of the things that kind of bummed me out a little bit is the purple shades in this really don't look very purple. Um, like the one that I, one of the main reasons why I bought it, there's this one color that they call Shady Bitch, which is a purple metallic. It's kind of creamy, and I like to use my finger when I apply it, but it looks almost blue, almost gray. It's not nearly as bright as I would like, and that's what we have is the lid color here. So I, meanwhile, Last year at a Dollar Tree of all places, I had gotten this LA Colors Matte Quad here, and I wasn't a hundred percent thrilled with it when I got it home because these are not very bright colors, uh, and the pale color here is not light enough for a, a brow bone color for the very lightest people. Um, I it's much too dark for me to use in that. So, but however. If you're a person with darker skin, I'm sure that you could wear use this palette. And actually, I think LA colors, their matte colors are much better than their shimmer colors because their shimmer colors, there's like a shimmery coating on the outside of it. But when you go to apply it, there's actually a, a totally different color inside. And so I really recommend if you're buying LA colors eyeshadow, their mattes are much better. But the this does have some purples in it. And the lighter of the two, I found use for. But for my white, I had to dip back into, this is the uh, B&H Cosmetics Modern Mats. And this is the actual label on it. And this uh, lid is starting to crack. These really, I'm telling you, this recycled plastic, it's flimsy as all get out. But I'm going to show you how... I did all this stuff. Now, first thing, before I even dip into the coconut oil and all that stuff, I have some antibacterial wet wipes. I've been uh, handling my cats. You know, we love our kitties. They're family, but they're germy. And you certainly don't want to get germs when you're touching your face and touching your makeup and stuff. So you always want to clean your hands. And, of course, I have to make sure the Tabby Boy isn't going to go using... My floor is a litter box because I have my door barricaded shut. So, oh, what do you think of my hair? You like it? I have to try to get close to the uh, light because the further away I get from the light, I don't want this hair looking blue-black or something. Because I just washed it out. And don't you know I missed a spot when I was doing the, my hair? I missed a spot right on top, and I had to actually put dye in it. So this actually has unwashed out dye right here. This is what the back looks like. Oh, and this dress, I want to give you a closer look at, at it. This is from a company called American Rag Sea. 
And I actually, here, I'm going to give you a better look at it. I actually want to hem it. It is, it would normally be coming down to like here and I can't show off my stocking. So I have a certain hemline that I like. I, when I put this on, I realized why I only wore it once it's because it's not the right length and it's way too big also. And I'll tell you later, I'll tell you how I actually acquired it. But uh, I have it safety pinned. I want it to be like, you know, the kind of hem length I like. But uh, where I got this dress, our neighbors. We have neighbors who throw out any damn thing. Perfectly good clothes. And I'm not ashamed to say that sometimes if I see something intriguing, damn right I'll fetch it out of the trash. And I'll wash it to hell. Because... Hey, free fits my budget. You get really groovy things that way. Uh, don't don't be so proud that you can't acquire free stuff. If somebody's going to be wasteful and throw out something perfectly good and you can wash it very carefully, sterilize it, use water at least 160 degrees. That way, if there are any bed bugs on it, you'll kill the bed bugs. And I imagine that also kill roach eggs too. Um, someday, maybe we'll have a story about that. But yeah, there's totally ways to sterilize and sanitize clothing that you pick out of the trash or you find on the ground or something because somebody's trash might just be your treasure. All right, now I gotta, don't you know, I forgot to get something to tie my hair back. And I don't know if it's here or if I have to, it's a shame I can't use this to uh, tie my hair back. If you're out in there making litter box, I'm going to smack your ass. Tabby boy, ah, what are you doing? Get out of there. Get out of there. Oh, bastard. Excuse me. I'm going to let him out my door. Because if you're going to do that kind of stuff, no, you're not. Get. Get. Son of a bitch. Sorry about that. I don't know if he made a deposit or not. Let me take a look. Oh, thankfully, I, I thankfully he didn't. I'm sorry about that. This is live. It's not edited. The things are going to happen. They're going to happen because that's how I roll. Let me find something to tie my hair up. Okay. Bet you've never seen anybody do this before. See this garter belt? By the way, my garter belts are totally uh, breaking down. Some of them I've had, I don't want to say how many years because you're going to think I'm old or something. Let's just say I have some, uh, some I got before 9-11, all right? And anything that has uh, rubber in it, eventually the rubber is going to dry rot and it's going to stretch and it's going to break. And like my white garter belt, it almost fell down off my hips the other night and it almost took my underwear with it. And I'm walking across the street and literally the crotch on my thong started to go like it was going to go lower than my the hem of my skirt and I'm walking down the street and I'm trying to think of a discreet way to hike it up without touching the my underwear you know the inside of my underwear with my hands because my hands aren't totally sterilized and I'm certainly not going to you know contaminate myself right and I certainly don't want to make a spectacle of myself either and there, I didn't have time to go into a restroom to do it and every time I would duck into a dark corner to try to do it it seemed like there was some dirt ball guy that was trying to see what I'm doing and it was really pissing me off because there's a lot of dirt balls floating around. But anyway, let me try and tie my hair back. This is a stupid thing to try to tie my hair back with. You know, why I didn't grab something to tie my hair with when I knew I was doing this video, I don't know. Because I have to tie my hair back. I mean, I don't have to, but it's better doing this than getting hair in my face. So, anyway, now we can get started. Got my coconut oil and bare hands. And we are going to take off, or I'm going to take off one eye. Take off eye makeup, not the eye. Incidentally, if I did have to get an eye replacement, did you know that, uh, at least for uh, the person that I knew in Hollywood who had a glass eye, well, he was um, on SSI, and 
they will only replace your eye once if you lose it. And I think they pay or it costs $1,200 or something. Now, this was in the late 90s. I'm sure it probably costs a lot more now. So if there's a bottom line to any of this, don't lose your eye, okay? Yeah. Don't, don't do a Sammy Davis Jr. If you're really young, you might want to Google and find out who that is. He's dead. He was really great actor and singer, and he was part of the Rat Pack. He ran with uh, Old Blue Eyes, you know, uh, chairman of the board, Frank Sinatra, and he played Vegas. And I believe Sammy Davis Jr. was one of the first uh, black people to integrate Las Vegas. Las Vegas used to be kind of a racist town where if they did have black people performing, they were not allowed to eat and go to those same hotel casinos, which obviously was a pretty crappy uh, thing to be going on. But when he came on the scene, uh, Frank Sinatra and he were friends and he took him under his wing. And I believe that put the kibosh on racism in Las Vegas. I could be a little bit wrong with some of my facts here, but I'm pretty sure that's kind of the story. So, but you didn't think you'd be hearing stuff like that on my channel, huh? Okay, I'm taking this off. Uh, there's some other things I want to mention while I'm doing all this. Now, this was the foundation that I was looking for. Um, but I couldn't find it. I finally found it later on today. And when I was starting to do my makeup around, oh, what, 11 o'clock this morning. And it's right now 4.30 in the morning. You know, my usual filming time. The only thing I had by way of foundation now was uh, I used a concealer, and I didn't want to use that too dark concealer that I just bought um, that I used the last time. And by too dark, I mean this age rewind. I got the lightest color, but the 100 porcelain or ivory, I believe, is too dark for me. It's okay. It's a little too dark. Anyway, so for foundation, I use the B&H Cosmetics Studio Pro uh, Total Coverage Concealer, and it is so light that maybe it's a tiny little bit too light, but I would much rather go a little bit too light than a little bit too dark as far as foundation. Plus, if my foundation is even more than a little bit too light, people just think it's gothic anyway. Because in the goth scene, I used to wear white face. And usually gothic people don't do it as opaque as KISS does it. They they uh, mute it out just by, if it's a cream compact, you just spread it out more. And that's how you get the gothic white face look as opposed to the KISS or the clown face white. So I'm going to replace some of what got taken off with that oil. I hope I remember all the things that I wanted to mention on this because certain things like the makeup I diagrammed in my notebook, but there is definitely some things that I want to bring up that I think would be of interest. Now, I see that I'm running low on foundation. I still have a couple of those uh, cream compacts from Color Mates, but I and they're best for traveling, especially if you're going to be going past security that doesn't allow you to bring liquids, then a cream makeup or a powder makeup for that matter would be ideal. And when I travel, I tend to go to places where security is very tight and I don't even fly or anything, but it's like if I'm going to Washington, D.C., if I'm going to be going to the Capitol building, if you've ever gone to Washington, D.C. and you want to go to the Capitol, there's a sign saying no liquids. So. And when I was last time I was there, that's in fact where I did go because, and maybe you saw this if you've been looking at my channel for a while. I went on the 4th of December to pay my respects to George Herbert Walker Bush. His body was lying in state, draped, you know, in a casket, draped with the flag in the Capitol Rotunda, and I went there. And I always like to check security regulations before I go places. Because the last thing I want is my makeup and my goodies to be confiscated. We don't want that. Now, just for something sticky on my eyelid, I am going to use some of this. One thing that I also don't care for this, besides the fact that they don't have an eight, uh, a 
color range for everybody. And, you know, everybody wants color ranges for darker people. And I'm not saying that they shouldn't have color representation because everybody should be represented. But everybody means everybody. That means the whitest of the white also, not just the darkest of the dark. You know, I know that there's all kinds of interesting immigration going on now, but let's not forget the Europeans, please. I, I, you know, it's bad enough that we're dying out because we're not reproducing, but we really need, it's getting harder and harder to find foundations that are light enough. And I'm wondering if I need to go buy from Irish companies or something. Of course, Ireland, Ireland's getting messed up with immigration too. Why, why people from other parts of the world want to go to Ireland? I don't know. If they're Catholic, I could see it, but really, it, it's like you can't find countries with their countrymen anymore. Everybody's from someplace else now, and Europe is dying. And that's another subject. And again, I wasn't planning on getting political in this video, but I can't keep silent about the things that matter. That's just if you know me at all. That's just how I roll. So, with that said, let's start with our first thing here. Um, oh, yeah, before I get into that, uh, I want to make some comments about when you first, when you do a fresh dye job like I just did, if you are like myself and you like to have your eyebrows match your hair, when you do a new dye job, you have to think about what your eyebrow color is going to be. And I had to look through the colors that I usually use for my eyebrows, and so many of them were too pink or too red, or some of them could be too blue. And finally, the color that I settled on was an Ulta uh, eyeliner, gel eyeliner, and the color is called Majesty. And I'm going to recommend this color to you. If you have purple hair and the color that's framing your face happens to be punky color plum, this color is a pretty good color match. And tell me if, if you think I'm lying. The only thing is I noticed with skinny pencils, I prefer a thicker, something thicker. It's easier to actually apply the color. Like I've used eye shadow brushes, like I would recommend a C brush also. Um, but my C brushes were uh, wet from being washed and I couldn't use them. So I just used a pencil, but it took me longer than I would have liked because when you're using a thin pencil, have to go like this and you have to just a bunch of stuff you have to do it's kind of a pain but hey we don't mind paying for beauty's sake right i mean i'm not lying so first thing we're going to do is dip into the b h cosmetics modern mattes palette just because it has this white if you don't have this palette Feel free to use any matte white. You do want a matte and not a shimmer because if you have any hooding on your eyelids at all, if it's shimmery, it could make your lids, your saggy lids, look like they're even saggier and it's not really flattering. I learned this from personal experience. So use any matte white. And this brush, this brush right here is actually technically a lip brush, so it's a little firmer than probably would be ideal, but dip into this, then get a mirror, and you want to cover just like a quarter inch closest to your eyebrow, and do it opaque enough so that you could see it, and especially if you have a very light foundation, you might have to go over once or twice to make sure that you could see it. You want to see some contrast. So if your foundation's real, real light, you're going to probably want to pass over more than once with this. You don't want to go more than a quarter inch, though, because you don't, you still want to have that sticky layer on your eyelid for the other shadows that we're going to apply. Okay. Oh, one thing I'm going to try to make an attempt to do, I noticed in my videos, I don't look like I'm establishing eye contact enough. And I noticed like I'm watching people, news people on TV and stuff. They always look like they're looking directly in the camera. And my problem is I tend to look at in my own eyes when I'm looking at the monitor. And I don't know whether I should be looking in my own eyes or if I should be looking 
up at the camera. And the camera right here is this tiny little webcam thing on the edge of my computer. And then there's a light right next to it. And the temptation is to look at the light, which is okay because it's right next to the camera. But if I don't know if I should be looking at the lens or if I should be looking in my eyes. And I want to seem like I'm talking to you because obviously if you're at home or you're at work or wherever it is you're walking, you're watching me, I want you to feel like we're in the living room together or we're someplace and we're friends and we're chit-chatting about life and I'm letting you into my world and my crazy cats and bitching about my neighbors and maybe throwing a little politics and throwing some, you know, whatever it is I talk about, but I want this to be personal and I want it to be homey and I want it to be human, uh, you know. And the fact that I don't edit means you get to see the imperfections, but I think that kind of proves that it's more real. I don't know. Maybe it might even be charming. I, I don't know. I don't know how you perceive me, but that's the effect that I'm trying to go for. So now the first, next thing we're going to do is we're going to dip into this LA Colors matte palette that I got at Dollar Tree for a dollar. And I'm using my current favorite brush. This is B&H Cosmetics I7. Oh, and I know what I wanted to do. I wanted, next time I brought these brushes out, I wanted to show you the boxes that they came in because the boxes actually uh, showed more about the brushes. But don't you know, I don't have the boxes here. And if they're over there, I don't like going out of frame. So. I guess I'm not going to do that. Next time I'll do that. Um, dip into, you see it has like a bluish color and two purples. And this is the lighter of the two colors. The lighter of the two purples. And dipping into this brush, make sure that you can see it in the frame. And get it really good. We're not just tapping and being delicate here. We're going to really get it packed good. Turn it around. Tap it a little so that you don't get, you know, crumbly below your eyes and this is going to be our crease color and just sweep back and forth back and forth do a good job with this you use your tail of your eyebrow as a guide try not to go past that I mean, I'm sure sometimes I do and of course I'm going to try to make sure that both eyes match and considering how long the eye makeup has been on this time Sometimes I take my makeup off and redo it just before filming, but uh, I didn't do that today. And obviously tonight I have to film because tomorrow is my next posting day. So when you're a full-time YouTuber, the pressure is real. Okay, this looks about right. Now, this is our next step. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and take this Gardevoir out of my hair because it's pulling in a way that's just getting on my nerves. And of course, my hair is going to get in my face and that's going to get on my nerves too. But you know what? Too bad. Okay, we're getting back into the Too Faced Then and Now palette. And this time, we're going to use our fingers. We do this again with this antibacterial germ killing uh, wet wipes. And I'm going to dip into this color called Shady Bitch, the color that at first I thought was this wonderful metallic purple, but it is so dark, it's more plum than purple. And I think it looks almost grayish. It's not as bright as I really would have liked. I'm not saying I'm getting tired of this palette, but I've been pretty much using it exclusively see now as i'm putting it on it looks purple to me but and i'm just applying it all over the lid but not going as high as a crease and then as i get close to the edge i'm going to flick it up now don't stretch the skin when you do it because then you then it's not going to be at the right angle i mean try not to you're actually tapping and pressing and then lightly, you know, release the pressure and go up like that. This It might take some trial and error. And if you have long nails, by the way, it's not going to work. 
Oh, you know what? I just realized I forgot to take my chip nail polish off. Damn it. That looks so crappy. I'm sorry I forgot. Yeah. I I have to have I feel like I have to have some kind of nail polish on. That way when my hands get close to the camera, you don't just see these white caterpillar kind of well actually no. Caterpillars would look better. Okay. Now next thing I'm gonna do is wipe that off. I'm gonna go back into the Too Faced Then and Now palette. On the very top is a is a double color called Ooh and Awe. Ah. The ooh the ooh and awe. Ah. I guess the ooh must be the black metallic and the awe ah is this silver metallic. And take a clean finger and press it into the silver and you're gonna get like a dot like this. And then what we're going to do is first take your finger and put it right in the corner. And you're pressing, you're pressing kind of hard and you're wiggling some. And you should see a dot. Okay. And you know what? I'm going to do that again on the other side that I did already, but I want to make sure that they match. Okay, just so they match. Okay, now then we're going to take that same finger and we're going to go into that this silvery color, this ooh and ah again. And you see this? And now we're going to take your finger and put it approximately where your pupil is, right in the center of your eyelid, close to the lash line. And hopefully both eyes match. And this will give an additional, I'm going to do a little bit on this side here too, just so they match. And hopefully this will give like a highlight to your lid. Does that look about right? Okay. Now, I'm going to show you another little trick I figured out. Get it. And this is about mascara. Now, and with this look, by the way, I'm skipping eyeliner. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I forgot something. Darn it. My under eye color. For my under eye color, I'm back into the uh, Too Faced Then and Now palette. There is a really beautiful metallic fuchsia shade called Reality Star. And this is probably the best color in the whole palette. I'm gonna make sure you can see it. This color here. And instead of using a brush, I'm using a Q-tip, a flimsy Q-tip. That these have totally plastic, flexible things that are no good for cleaning your ear out because they're flexible. And plus, the, the head's way too small, and it's too easy to poke your eardrum. So I don't recommend it. But they really, they are so flexible that they don't give you like if you have an itchy ear, these. Q-tips totally suck. What they are good for is makeup applicators. And you touch it because these uh, metallic, these uh, glitter shadows are creamy. And if you press too hard, you will totally dig them up and waste a lot of product. Just tap it, turn it around some, and this is what we're going to do under the eye. And how I did it, just carefully go and you're following the line of your eyelid and I'm going to have to do some more. You know, just get a good, good bit of color on your Q-tip. Wait, can you see? I don't understand. In order for me to get this in frame, I have to hold it higher than it seems like I would have to hold it. I'm still working on trying to make sure I stay in frame here. Get close, not too thick. Okay, now here's a mascara trick. Have you ever had a mascara that you really loved 
because the formula was great and the brush was really unusual, but it was kind of pricey and you don't want to spend that kind of money. I know I feel like that. I never want to spend too much money. If I can afford spending, avoid spending money at all, I'll do it. But makeup, we have to spend money on. So here's a trick to get a similar look from a cheaper mascara. I'll use as an example this wand here. This was from a, a L'Oreal Telescopic. I believe L'Oreal is what puts out uh, Telescopic. I think so. Well, yeah, the Telescopic mascara has a brush that looks like a French tickler. It's got, it's the ball uh, kind that reach all your little lashes and stuff. What you do is you take, you save your mascara wands. You cut them off so that you don't have this big bulky handle, which I think for a person with small hands, that's too much. Save them, clean them real well. Then you take your cheapo mascara and you dip this other wand into your cheapo mascara get a nice coating and apply it that way. That way you kind of have the benefits of your more expensive mascara using a cheaper mascara just by using the more expensive mascara's wand. And these are always good to save anyway because they're good for uh, getting out clumps in mascara. These are even good for if you have a pet cat or dog and they get food stuck in their fur, uh, wet their fur, and use a clean mascara spoolie, and you can get their food uh, stuck out of their pet's fur. So these have lots of uses. They're also good for uh, making your eyebrows bushy before you put color in them. Mascara spools, I mean, and you can actually buy uh, cheap ones, bags of them, but why do that when you get, use your own from your own mascaras? So with that, here, let me take this down. And of course, I'm going to have to wash that because that's probably that touched some surfaces. And anytime something's ever touched a surface, you want to wash it real good before putting it back in your mascara because you don't want to contaminate it. Anytime you <clears throat> get germs in uh, sealed up jars and everything, they will multiply. And mascara, you shouldn't have more than three, four months tops anyway. <clears throat> Of course, I'm breaking my own rules because I have a number of mascaras open and I do want to use them up before I open up anything good. So with this mascara applicator, and I, I really love this applicator because it really gets the tiny lashes. Which, where are you going? Oh, tell me Cassie's going to leave. And if she leaves, she's going to sleep in... in in my roommate's bed. Where are you going? Hey, Psst, Cassie. Oh, bastard. Uh, well, one thing, roommate's gonna going to work tomorrow at 11 o'clock, so as soon as he leaves, I'm going to go fetch her anyway. When we had to put the foot down. He, my roommate's an idiot. He has his windows open when the heat's on, and uh, I told the other roommate about it because she kind of has more control over him. And I said, you know, something's got to be done. You can't pay the heat to grade outdoors. So she uh, went in there and she got his clothes. He, he jams his door open with clothes. So you can't close the door. And, you, and so you have all this draft. So anyway, she took his clothes out from where they were jamming the door open. And she hung them up on hangers. And put them on, you know, those hooks that attach to the back of the door so that you can hang clothes behind your door for more hanging space. Anyway, that's what we did so that when he has his window open with no screens, letting the flies and other wildlife in, at least we won't have the draft through the whole house heat and great outdoors. So, I hope you don't have idiotic roommates like I do. I'm telling you, it's a pain in the ass. I, I would say so much more about things and situations and people if I could make sure that they didn't see these videos, you know. I have two videos that I actually set to private because I talked about subjects that I don't want the people that I was talking about to find them. And my intention is that when I move out of this place and I'm in a different city, I'm going to make those, I'm going to open up those videos again because I want them to be seen. I don't want them to go viral because I don't want to get it, them to get back to the guilty parties. 
But if I am bitchy about something enough to go actually go on video about it, obviously it's something that matters to me. And if it's if I'm pissed off enough, then I'm pissed off for a reason. I don't get upset for no reason. And there's a lot of selfish people with agendas that are floating around out there. And they might smile at your face, but they will be underhanded. And th there's a lot of angry people. There's a lot of racist people. There's a lot of assholes. And uh, unfortunately, they all seem to be in my neighborhood. Yeah, yeah I, I should definitely, I, I would definitely like to talk some more about the people downstairs. They're real assholes. God. You know, we were here first. We were here for a good three years before they moved in, and they're just making our lives holy hell. But when I move out, when I move out into another state, and I'm sure I'm still going to be doing these videos, then I can tell you about the situation. <sighs> And I'm going to, I don't always do the lower lash line because it's very hard to keep mascara from smudging on colored eyeliner. I am doing a little bit, but that's the thing. Colored eyeliner will get black mascara smudges on it, and then you won't really see much of the colored eyeliner. But of course, this, oh, somebody came back. Cassie came back. What happened? Did Tabby Boy chase you? You're not having the black eyeliner makes this maybe a little bit more subtle. And subtle's not really the look I'm going for usually. I find subtle to be boring. Um, that's why I really can't get into neutrals too much. They just do not float my boat. I mean, I could see wearing them in a dramatic fashion if you're wearing leopard print or something. And there may be times when you have to be work appropriate. But even, I, I would never work a job where I couldn't be myself. I just, I, and that, and sometimes I suffer for it because I'm not making as much money as maybe I would like to, to be able to pay rent and stuff. But I just, I have to be true to myself and I can't, I can't be something that I'm not, you know, that's why I tend to always work showbiz type gigs. So for blush, we are using the B&H Cosmetics Special Occasion 39 color eyeshadow and blush palette. Uh, most of the eyeshadow colors for me are not very practical because they are neutral and not very exciting. However, there are some that are useful, such as the very, very light uh, this is good if you're a pale person. Now, these dark colors here, I would think, would be really good if you're a very dark-skinned person. So this, in a way, does have something for everybody. And it's probably a good palette to have in case you have uh, occasions where you need to be able to pull off a more neutral eye. And especially if you're a movie extra and you ever have... Uh, or do a dramatic makeup on set and the director changes his mind and says he doesn't want you, he wants you to take your makeup off. And this is a true story. It happened to me for a, a TV series or a movie uh, that I was in. And uh, I saw the people, uh, the people that were not goths, because most of us were gothic that were in this scene. But anyway, there were some normal people too. And they didn't take their makeup off because they were wearing a natural look makeup. So when I saw that they were able to keep the makeup that they were wearing, I learned something that day. That just because a director says, take your makeup off, doesn't mean that he wants you to not be wearing makeup. He just doesn't want to be makeup that's obvious. So you live and you learn. And I have lots of stories from movie sets from my years in California. And I trust, mark my word, I am going to come back. Uh, I just can't afford to pay rent there, so I'm going to have to do that jitney thing. Okay, the color I'm using for my cheek, well, I'm going to pull my hair back so you could see what my cheeks look like. I didn't use a contour, but I used the blush high on my cheekbones to give a bit of a contour look. And there is a kind of a red 
roughly a red shade in this and I tapped it to this and I applied it just here and here. I'm certainly not going to add more to it because there's enough on there. Cassie's bath. Pretty girl. Meet your number, huh? Yes. Now this is my highlight. This is the B&H Cosmetics Black Light Highlight Palette that I am definitely using up. And uh, this time the highlight color I'm using is the white one and the color is called Strobe. Each of these colors has a name. It's really nice when uh, they put names in some of the palette colors. B&H doesn't do it on all their palettes, but when they do, it is nice to have a name for something. It makes it so much easier to diagram a makeup look to do a tutorial. If I have, if it has a name, instead of having to describe it by the row it's on, and whether it's left or the right, the one through six, that could be real problematic. So I'm using a foundation brush, and this is a Vivace foundation brush that I got at the dollar store, and just tap onto it. And here I will maybe touch it a little bit more to just tap. And there's different techniques. You can use a fan brush, there's different brushes you can use here, here, here. I was doing this and this. Oh, I remember what else I wanted to tell you. I When I wrinkled up my forehead like that, I just remembered one of the concerns warnings that I have to advise you if you can't find your foundation and you are using a concealer. Concealers oftentimes will be thicker and if you have to use in an emergency you have to use a, a concealer as a foundation. If you have any lines or wrinkles in your forehead at all it will cake in them and it will accentuate them and it's a good idea just before you leave the house just before you go on film clean your hand always want to have a clean hand before you touch your face, then tap wherever you have any wrinkles. Tap. If you do that, then it won't cake in them and accentuate them nearly as much. Do it under here. Do it under here. The nasolabial folds, that's what these are called. If you have 11s here, if you're old enough, that's actually caused by contraction of the corrugator muscle. When people get Botox injections, which is one of my goals, but I can't afford it, that would be around here. And that is supposed to dramatically reduce the depth and appearance of your lines and wrinkles. And that's definitely one of my goals. I don't see any moral problem with using modern medical science to improve your appearance. There's no, no shame in that. The only thing is it's not a one and done. You have to do it like every five months or so and the cost, you know, and that's a shame. But things that you want to do that insurance won't cover and nothing is cheap. And there's so many things that we can do at home, but most of us can't do Botox injections at home. I don't have the botul botulinum toxin uh, on me and it, however I live in the ghetto I could get syringes that's pretty bad people selling all kinds of stuff I could get a point but the the uh, Botox yeah that costs a lot of money and I don't have it never got it but someday heck I've been wanting it since the 90s if you want me to tell you the truth so okay this is the lipstick that I'm wearing And it is from, no, not one. this is the lipstick I'm wearing. It's from ELF, E-L-F, and the color is called Teemo or T-E-A-M-O. Um, if it's another language, guess what? I'm a monoglot American. I'm not going to even try. Why they would have uh, names that are in another language. I could see if something's bilingual. A lot of times, like companies will be will be half in French and half in English. Sometimes it maybe it might even be bilingual Spanish and English. But anyway, this just says Timo or something. 
No, wait a minute. This, no, that isn't that one. This, this is red carpet. This is, okay, this is the one I used. And, okay, so you know what? It wasn't e.l.f. This is the e.l.f. one. This is from B&H Cosmetics. And this is called, no, yeah, this is from B&H Cosmetics. And this is Timo. This is from e.l.f. E -L -F, and this is called Red Carpet. So I'm wearing Red Carpet. I was going for a red that went better with my dress. I really like to do the matchy-matchy thing. If you can't, if you don't have enough different colors to do matchy-matchy, at least consider whether the color is warm or cool. Okay, um, what just happened here is my computer is balanced on a box on top of my stand-up desk, and the box just fell down. And I find the box makes it on a higher angle so that it doesn't look like you're either looking up my nose or anything else that's unflattering. So, I always thought that maybe the camera is supposed to be at eye level or at head level, and it's not quite high enough. Um, let's see. Mm. Okay, that's better. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I forgot here. The makeup is right here. Um, looking at my cheat sheet here. Yeah, I don't think I forgot anything on that. Uh, you got my cat. Oh, Cassie, come here. Oh, she tried to run away from me. Oh, Cassie, try to run away from me. What you want to do that for? Don't you want to say goodbye to our friends? If you like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you think this video sucks, give it a thumbs down. You know, YouTube will still see that you're giving me attention, and so it's good either way. If you like me and my cats and the content that we make, I'd love to have you subscribe. Yeah, tell them. Tell them all about it. Cassie's saying that she would like you to subscribe to my channel and make sure to hit that bell notification so you get to see everything I post. And yeah, do that. And she also says that she wants you to send her some cat food and some kitty treats. And yes, and she also says that Tabby Boy's an asshole. That he's always trying to sniff her tail and she doesn't have a sense of humor at all, right? Listen to that! Listen to the kitty! Oh my goodness! So, so do you like this makeup job? See? It's using three palettes. Oh, 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 ouch, ouch, ouch. Hey, 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 hey. Three palettes. Then and now palette. And the white from the modern mats. And that LA Colors matte quad with the purples in it. All right, all right, all right. And <laughs> this concludes another groovy video from Leather Rock. Hope to see you soon. Bye.